Hi everyone. Uh, this is a video for our Psych 2001 Laboratory Experience course this fall 2023 for those of us learning to program cognitive psych experiments with JS Psych. So I just added this course website a couple of days ago. I sent around the instructions for getting a Quarto blog up and running. Quarto's the same tool that we're using to build this website here. So you should be working on getting this Quarto blog put together. And once you have that, we can move on to week two, uh, where we're gonna discuss really basic HTML and JavaScript. And I see that I should actually update the title for this. And seeing as we haven't used Quarto too much in this course, I'll just do that right now. In our Quarto file system, I've got a blog folder the second post is right here, and it's the index.qmd file. And I'm just going to go into the title field and add week two to the front. That will, I think, look better on the blog. And I could re-render this. Uh, notice also in our studio, you can view the what you've rendered. There's a little viewer pane here that pretends to be a browser. Uh, but we could go back and look at it in Firefox. I have to reload this. And there we go. We got week two back up. So that's what we're doing for uh, week two. Okay, so I made this post for us all. If you click it, you can read through it. Um, the title, it says it all in the title. We're going to go through basic HTML and JavaScript. Really basic for somebody who's a complete beginner. So if you're already familiar with these two things, this will probably be review. You should already have RStudio and R installed, as well as GitHub desktop and a GitHub account. We'll be using those tools in this uh, course and for this week. Uh, basically, when we're writing code for the web, all you really need is a text editor. And let me see if I can just make this a bit bigger, easier to read. So yeah, for today, all we really need is a text editor to write code and a web browser to check that the code works. Uh, so fortunately, all of that is in our studio. Our studio is a text editor, and I've got Firefox loaded up as my preferred browser for debugging code. I'm making a note that Google Chrome is fine, Safari is fine, but if you want to be consistent with what I'm doing, we could use Firefox. Okay, so just a quick rundown of what concepts I want to cover today. They're all right here. What is HTML? What kind of file is it? And uh, well, I, I think I'll just jump into each of these as we go and talk about them along with examples with code. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of testing on my recording situation here. So I wanna see if I can pause the video. Okay, it seems like I easily pause and restart. So if I get the sense that I need to pause and do some stuff, I will do that and try to cut down on uh, breaks in the video. Let's deal with the first thing. What is HTML and what kind of file is it? Okay, so HTML, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And I'm going back into RStudio here you know, if, if you're following along making a blog post for this week, you'll have a folder uh, with a probably a two or something indicating you're working on a blog post for your second week. So that's what I've got here. And I've uh, written this post to help guide me on what I want to say in this video. And we're on this part. What is HTML? What kind of file is it? Let's answer that question inside of our studio. So first of all, I'm going to um, create a new text file. We can do that right here with this green plus. We could do it over here with this green plus. Uh, this one I like, it's, it's just right there. And what I'm gonna make is a text file. And let's call this uh, test underscore HTML. And well, if I press OK, we get a blank file over here. And actually notice there is no extension on this file. 
it's just that whole word. Um, I'm going to rename this. I can do that by clicking here. And some of these options will change depending on how expanded our studio is. So we can rename it here. If I want this to be a text file, I need to give it a txt ending. Now it's a text file. I can write plain text in it. Uh, whenever I do something that changes the file, it will turn red and you have to save it if you want the save, if you want the changes to, to be saved. So you can press this save button or on a Mac, I would do command S and it turns black. Okay, so an HTML file really is actually just a plain text file, but it has a different extension. So we'd have to, to make this an HTML file, we'd have to uh, rename it with an extension HTML. And it changes the icon here. And so we just made a HTML file. Maybe I will rename this again just for fun. I'm gonna click that, rename it, make it simple, test.html. All right, so over here in our window, we're now editing this thing, and there's nothing in it. It's just, I guess it's two blank lines right now, and that's it. So let's head back to our list of questions. And um, we've answered this. What is HTML? It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. I think I'll have a way of making that make more sense later. It's a text file. And uh, one concept to convey is that uh, web browsers, modern web browsers like Firefox, like what we're looking at, you could think of them as programming language compilers. And what they do is they take in HTML code and they compile it and display it as a web page in the browser. But one way to see that uh, is actually right in Firefox, we're looking at a web page. And this is the display part. It looks like a web page. It doesn't look like HTML code. We could see the HTML code that's behind this web page by going to, in Firefox and a Mac, I'm going up to Tools, and there's a Browser Tools option. And we can click, uh, let's do Page Source. Now we're looking at the HTML code. It's just a text file. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. So it looks pretty complicated. But when Firefox loads this text file, it renders it as this web page. Okay, so that's just a, a key concept to understand. If you knew how to write the code for HTML files by hand, you'd be able to just make them and save them as files and load them in a browser and look at them. So we're gonna move on to that, talk about the, the basic anatomy of an HTML file. Let's head over to our blank HTML file here and talk about the anatomy of an HTML file. So I'm just gonna write it by hand. I'm gonna start out with HTML, just like this. Uh, maybe I can make that even bigger, so it's even easier to read. And notice, as I typed this in our studio, it did a little bit of auto-completing for me. So we've got the letters HTML inside of a less than sign and a greater than sign. I'm gonna make some space here. And on the, so that's on the top. And on the bottom, we've got the same thing but there's a forward slash in front of HTML. All right, this is a big pattern that we're gonna see in HTML code. You can think of it like a sandwich. A sandwich has a top part and a bottom part and the stuff in the middle. So an HTML sandwich, it, uh, it tells you inside of the, I guess, what do you call those? Less than, greater than signs or arrows. It tells you what's inside the sandwich. So in this case, the word HTML says the inside part is going to be HTML. Great. 
Now, most HTML documents have two extra, two sections. They're very common and they're ca called the head. And I'm going to make some room for stuff that you would put in the header section. And just like a, a body has a head, after that is the body. So here we have a really basic website structure. It's a HTML. So all of this stuff inside is HTML. The, the first statement we have is called the head statement. It uses that same pattern surrounding by the arrows. You always start off the sandwich with a word disk element, and then you stop it with that slash. So anything we put in here, and there can lots of times be a lot of stuff in, in there, um, is inside the head part, and this is inside the body part. For example, if we went over to the page source, we should be able to see some of this somewhere. Okay, there we see the HTML that begins the document. There's a few other things in here before we see that little closing arrow. Oh, this is really small. So let me, All right. So there's our first HTML statement. Then everything in here is HTML and other stuff too, it turns out. But at the very end, we should see somewhere, we see scripts here, we'll talk about that later. We should see something that ends the HTML. Let me see if I can find it. There's one, there's two. Okay, this is not a great way to look. I was expecting there to be an HTML at the end somewhere. But as you can see, the word keeps appearing in a lot of different places. So we'll just have to take my word for it that it is somewhere. I'm getting off track, but sorry. I just wanted to show you in a real life example. We have a, a head part. Now, a lot of stuff is in the head part. It keeps going for quite a while. It finishes here. There's lots of scripts and things. You could think about it kind of like the way a head tells the body what to do. A lot of the stuff you put up in the, in the head part are instructions for how to interpret what's in the body part. So once we have, uh, if we move on, we've got the starting point for the body, and then we've got the rest of the web page. And this is oftentimes related to the, the content of the web page, that is, all of the words and stuff like that would go in the body. So here we have a template for a basic website with nothing in it. What do I mean by that? Well, we could save this and it's this file right here, test.html. Now I could go ahead and open this file. I think if I click on it, it allows me to view in a web browser. Okay, so that's opened up in a Safari, but I want to open it up over here. And notice the, the path is to a file on my computer. So I'm just opening up this file that's on my computer and it's completely blank. All right. We haven't said anything in here. Oops. So let's uh, fill it up. Let's put some stuff in there. That gets uh, to our next section, adding HTML elements to the body. So I happen to have memorized a few of these. We can just go into the body section and start adding some stuff. So what would you like to add? Uh, let's add some text. How do we do that? Well, we have to, um, we have to, we would have to know what is an element we could put in here that would support displaying text on a website. 
One of those is called the P element, short for paragraph. So this indicates that we're going to start some text displayed as a paragraph on the website. So I could say, hello, this is some text, period. Great. We've got our little uh, paragraph sandwich going on. Now if I save this, uh, I could go back to Firefox, go back to this test.html website, and if I reload it, let's see what happens. Cool. We are seeing that text being displayed in the web browser. And that's pretty much it. You can add all sorts of web elements into the body. And if you put them in there with the correct syntax, they'll display on the website. We could have more of these. It, the sint some, sometimes the syntax is forgiving. So if we do it all on one line um, and then just type some stuff, you know, that'll work too. And you can always go to the web browser and see what the outcome looks like. So this might not look like something you'd want to show other people. And there's all sorts of options you can do for formatting. What I have linked to on the blog is a link to W3 schools. And I suggest going here to check out different kinds of elements you could add to a web page. So I'll just go there real quick. There's a HTML element section. Gives you some different ideas for things. And you can just try copying them in and out. So this one, my first heading, I suspect, well, I know what that's going to do. It's going to make a level one header. You could grab that, uh, put it in here, press save, go back to Firefox, reload. And it's putting a header in there. And it's automatically doing some things like making it a larger font, may even be bolding it. What else does HTML have? Well, there's all sorts of things you can, and you could scroll through here. Uh, let me see. One thing. I'm looking for buttons. Forms, graphics, media, you can add pictures. You can you could probably search this website somewhere right here buttons see if that is helpful Ooh, that's a terrible search all right i couldn't find the the button on w3 schools so I usually, I guess I would just use a Google search like button HTML or something like that. I'm looking to add an, an element that I could have a little bit of user interaction on. Uh, and it, it's actually just called button. So you could do something like this. Have a statement like that. And if I go and reload, what are we gonna see? Oh, did I forget to do something? What did I forget? Yes, this is red. That means I didn't save the file. So now that I've saved it, I should be able to reload. And a button appears in here, which is good. I'm noticing a little bit of delay in the video. I hope that's not too annoying. I'm not sure what's causing that. Okay, so we added some text. We added a button. And it's time to move on to the next piece. I'll just give a preview here. One of the assignments for this week is make your own simple HTML file and explore with adding all sorts of different kinds of elements to it. So can you add an image? Can you add a link? Could you add a YouTube video? Could you add different kinds of headers? Could you change the color of the font? Try all that kind of stuff out 
And there's lots of examples at W3 schools to, uh, to help you. Now, over the course of the semester, we're going to be displaying information on the screen, uh, like text or images, and we'll be asking people to respond to that information following different task instructions. And we're going to want to be able to programmatically control what text is displayed, how long it's displayed, where it's displayed, and all sorts of things. So we want to be able to change properties of the elements inside of it, the HTML body. So how do we do that? Enter JavaScript. So what is JavaScript? That's the first question. So JavaScript is a programming language. If we go back to our RStudio, uh, this one has a programming language built right into the console here. This is the R console. So if I go like one plus one here, we execute the R code, it returns a two. We could do lots of other stuff with R, but this is called the R console and it compiles R code. So with JavaScript, there's something very similar. We can run JavaScript code and compile it and do stuff with it. It turns out that web browsers, whoops, here we go, uh, in addition to rendering HTML, they also compile JavaScript. So they're pretty fancy. I'm going to go to the browser tools for Firefox. And instead of clicking on page source, which just shows the HTML, I'm going to go to the web developer tools. All right. So this brings up a different view. And just to talk about this view for a second, up here we're seeing the web page. In this section, we are seeing the page source, that is the HTML. So if you wanted to see, uh, you can see by scrolling up and down how individual HTML statements correspond to what you're seeing on the page. Uh, before I talk about JavaScript, I guess I'll just show you an example. So, so we're seeing some flashing on the screen as I scroll up and down. If I was to find, let's see, Quarto content, start scrolling down here. This thing, that's the main Quarto document content. Uh, I'm in the concepts to cover section and starting to go through each of these little pieces. So, right, I'm now finding the HTML for each of the things that we're seeing on the screen. If you're on a website somewhere and you're like, what exactly is like, what's going on here in the website? You can click this target button and then it will highlight sections for you. So if you wanted to quickly go to this part, it would find that just like that. So that's a way to uh, help move between the HTML and what you're seeing in the web developer tools. We'll come back here and say more across the semester. At the very bottom, what we have is the JavaScript console. Let me so I can make it a bit bigger to see. Got these two arrows and a flashing cursor. And if I type one plus one in here, it does the same thing as we saw in the R console. So that it turns out that one plus one is the same in the language for R and for JavaScript in terms of how you would have those programs uh, calculate one plus one. We can do all sorts of stuff with JavaScript. For example, uh, we could save information in a variable, and this happens to be a equals one with a semicolon. That happens to be a JavaScript statement. And if I type this, uh, we basically have created an object with 
the name A that has the contents one. And if I type A again and press enter, it's gonna return a one because there's a, a one in the A. Um, yeah, here we have the con, oh, you can also click console here and you'll see the JavaScript console. So that is how you can start to mess around with JavaScript by entering code into the console here. But there is some other ways too. So let's head back to our really basic HTML document. Now I've prepared some examples to start illustrating the uses of JavaScript, and we're going to put them in the head section of our document. I'm going to start off with some by just copying a few things in from another thing, put it in here. Whoops, I uh, didn't quite do that right. So let's look at this here. Inside of the head, we've created a script section. And inside of the script section, we can enter JavaScript code. So when the website is compiled, two things will happen. This stuff will get displayed in the website, right? This is the HTML. And this stuff will get compiled as JavaScript. Let's come up with a, I don't know, a funny name here. Uh, my cat's name is Ernie. So I'm going to call this Ernie. That's going to be the variable name that stores one plus one, right? Let's have, head over to Firefox. And when I reload this page, provided I have saved everything. Yep, I saved it. I reloaded the page. So we can see the text, but we what happened to the JavaScript? There was this Ernie equals one plus one. We don't see that. So that's being compiled in the background. But we could go to the web developer tools and ask the question, is there a, a variable named Ernie in the JavaScript memory for this web page. So I could start typing E R and it auto completes. Ernie is right there. And if I press enter, there's a two in it. Okay, so this web page is kind of doing two things at the same time. It's compiling that really simple JavaScript and also doing this. Um, yeah, notice that this button is an HTML element, but doesn't do anything. It's not connected to anything. This is where we can integrate uh, JavaScript together with an HTML element to have the user be able to make, uh, to have a couple things happen. First of all, we'll be able to allow JavaScript to change something on the website and we'll also enable the ability for a user to do something like press a button and this you know could be a keyboard button too but that will trigger a javascript function to to cause a change in something so we can start having interactive behavior on websites uh, let's do an example of how to do that so i'm just going to copy in from some other examples. I'm going to start with this one. Okay, I'm going to add a new button. And let's take a look at this. So the only thing, there's a couple of things that are different. Uh, the name of this button is going to say click me instead of press me. And inside of the button statement there's a new declaration it's called on click equals and inside of there we're giving it the name 
of some JavaScript function. In this case, it's called my function. So what's supposed to happen here is if the user clicked this button, it, the program should locate the my function, JavaScript function, and then do whatever that does. Now, notice uh, up here, there is, there is nothing up here saying what this thing should do. So at this moment, the code will not work. Uh, if I save this, reload, we get another button here. Uh, we get an error message. If I click it, it says my function is not defined. Yeah, it's not defined. What we would need to add inside the script, just like up here we've defined a variable called Ernie that stores a number, we're going to have to define a JavaScript function with a name that does something. Okay, here is an example of defining a JavaScript function. We start off with the word function, and then we give it a name that we will use for this function. So critically, these are the same here. A left and right parentheses. Uh, inside here, we can put inputs to the function followed by a left and right squiggly bracket, curly bracket. And then inside of the JavaScript function, we have a, a command that does something in JavaScript. Whoops. In this case, the console log command, what it will do is it will print stuff to the console. That's this thing right here. It will print stuff into here. Uh, back here. So if we declare this function properly, let's see what happens. Save it, reload, and let's see what happens if we start typing the name of that function, which was called m y f my function. It starts auto completing, and uh, if we run the function, it prints a four to the console. And that's what two plus two is here. So we've also set it up, hopefully, that if we click this button, that when it gets clicked, it will trigger this function that will execute this code. All of this means if we click the button, we should see a four be being printed to the console. Now, this is a really simple example, but the point is to start demonstrating some of these interactions between a, a, user, a user behavior, like clicking a button and having JavaScript do something. So if we click this, it's going to put fours in here. And uh, when it gets the same answer, it's just um, showing us that it happened a few times. Great. So this button demonstrates having a user behavior trigger the execution of a, Java, of a JavaScript function. Let's go back and try one more thing. Let's see if we can write a JavaScript function that changes something about the website. Okay. Here's another button we're going to use from this other document. Give it a different title. It's called Click Me to Change the Words. And we're telling it to run the add text function, which we haven't defined yet. So we'd have to go up here and, and write the add text function. Let me get st uh, started with that. So we could write function. We'd have to write the name 
add text. We'd have some input parameters. And then the main body of the function goes here. So, so far this won't do anything. And let's check out this part. By the way, I'm not, uh, I'm just showing some examples here. If you're totally new to JavaScript, there's no way you'd be able to intuit any of this stuff. Uh, what this is, is a way to change properties of HTML through JavaScript. So an HTML is a document that has stuff in it. Uh, this is some code that will select particular elements of HTML by their ID. And then it can change what's inside the HTML to something. All right, we're not quite there yet. This code is going to look for an HTML element, like one of these ones down here, any of these, that has the ID new thing. What is an ID? We haven't talked about that yet, and none of these things have that. Let's make one have one. <laughs> so for example, this, this element right here, it says something, something. We can give it a name, just like we gave the two plus two a name here, Ernie. We can give this HTML element an ID. You go beside the P, so we're, it, we're inside of this thing here. Type ID equals, uh, I guess we could do it without all these spaces, and then give it a name. Let's give it the name new thing. All right, if I save that and reload, what should happen here? If I click this, it should change the contents in this HTML element. And there we go. All right. So that is a pretty brief example of some basic HTML and JavaScript coding. What else did I have to talk about here? I think we got to the end. So your assignment is to create your own basic HTML file, explore adding as many kinds of elements as you want to it. Just go to town on that part and see if you can program some JavaScript interactions like the ones that I just showed you. Add your HTML file to your blog post so that it is viewable from your blog and so that the code is viewable from GitHub. All right, next week, we will start getting into JS Psych. And I should be able to show you an example of doing this part here because I have essentially done this assignment, right? I made test.html and it's right here and it does all those things. It's got a few different elements in it. I probably would have added more elements like a picture and a bunch of other stuff. How do I get this onto my Quarto blog? And how do I publish this to GitHub? Great questions. Okay, so the first thing is, in my blog post, I would like to add a link to the basic website, I guess. How about that? Uh, link to test.html. So using markup, we uh, we should be able to write text in between square parentheses. And then if we put, I guess those are square brackets, sorry. These are square brackets and these are parentheses. In here, we can put the location of the file we want to uh, locate. So I, let's try this, 
test.html. Bear with me. If this doesn't work, we'll try something else. Okay, when I render this document, we can scroll down. We should see a link to this. And looks like that worked just fine. A link to that. Now this works provided, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it here for now. The, this index.qmd file is in this folder alongside with the test.html file. Um, I can render the whole blog just to double check that everything's working. Actually, this also renders the course website. Go to the blog, I can see that uh, both of these things are here. Looks to be working. So if I open up GitHub Desktop now and head over to my blog, I should see that I've committed a whole bunch of different changes. I can make a summary of this. Uh, add week two. That summarizes my changes. I'm going to commit these changes. And I'm going to push these changes to the remote. So if we wait 20, 30 seconds, I'm just going to pause to do that waiting. All right, if I head over to my GitHub account, should be able to look. So this is now hopefully on the internet. If we click course blog, yeah, the week two has been posted. Great. And if we click this link, should see this uh, test website. Great. That's being displayed as a website. And if you wanted to see the actual HTML for that, you could see it on GitHub by going into blog to the second post. And uh, I guess it was test.html here. This is what we were working on. All right, that's it for this week. Good luck. Let me know if you have any problems. And next week, we'll start diving into JS Psych. See you then.